Welcome to lab three. We're going to add, we're going to code the ship in this layer so it doesn't sink too soon. Now we're going to handle root and child timelines. We did dealt with child timelines before when we coded the buttons for the our first game. Remember we made our first game uh, back buttons and start again buttons different colors? Well, we did that in the child timeline. Well, the child timeline for the ship contains movies. So we're going to be doing some things in the child timeline here that's a little different than you've seen before. So movie clip symbols have their own timelines, just like buttons do. Okay, you've seen the playhead before. Maybe you didn't know it was called a playhead. But what we're going to do is we're going to drag this playhead so we can see um, the animation within the child timeline of the ship. Watch it sink frame by frame. So now we're going to watch the ship's animation. So I'm going to go on the... I'm going to undo the unlock the ship layer and click there and I click on the ship. I'm going to double click the ship to see its t child timeline. And now we're going to drag the, this um, head and watch it. And watch, this. we're in idle now. You can see the waves around the ship. Maybe I should make the ship bigger. Here we go, so it's a little bigger, so you can watch the waves on the ship. Now we're about to watch the ship sink. There it goes. So that's the sinking animation there, until it disappears. So, you see we have two types of things here. We have an idle animation and a sink animation. In order for it to keep, to keep it from sinking, we want to put in, right here in the code layer, we're going to put in a blank keyframe and that's going to keep the um, ship from sinking automatically and we'll put some code in there. And later on we're going to code it for an event to trigger it to sink. So now we're going to come over here on frame 20 and we're going to right click and we're going to um, add a blank uh, keyframe right here, remember we're on the, the, the code layer of the ship. So I'm going to open up my actions panel and I'm going to put in some code go to and play, not go to and stop, but go to and play. So it turned blue so I did that right. So where are we going to have, what are we going to have it play? We're going to have it play idle. So then we end it with a semicolon. Make sure you have the quotation marks around it. Some of you guys are forgetting your quotation marks. So we're going to check the syntax. Clicks you back, you did fine. If you have errors, uh, then just click on your timeline button again and then go back to frame 20. And make sure you have this correct. All your punctuation right. Now you play your animation. Click your start button and your ship should stay in place. It shouldn't be sinking all the time. Okay, a registration point is, see this little uh, circle with the cross on it? That's a registration point for the ship. We're going to set this registration point right here at the beginning of the square. That's um, how the game tracks your symbol. It has a little x, y coordinate, just like in math. Your x and y coordinates tell your um, game the position of the ship. x is your horizontal position and y is your vertical position. And just like in math class, you have an x, y grid underneath your um, underneath your stage where you can put exactly where you want any particular thing. So the X coordinate tells you the horizon, the horizontal position of the symbol. The Y um, coordinate tells you how steep something is. It's the vertical position of the symbol. So now I'm going to minimize my action panel and um, I'm going to come back out. I'm going to click Scene. 
scene one and now I'm going to click and make sure I'm on the ship here and I'm going to position the ship at um, at X of 510 and I click Y and I'm going to put it at 310 and now it's exactly at the mouth of the entrance of the maze now something that changes in the game is called a variable for example the ship is not going to want stay in one place is it you're going to move it from here to there so its position is going to be a variable another type of variable is called a boolean value it's true or false so in this game you're going to be either dragging the ship or you're not so we're going to have an action here called dragging and we're going to have give it a boolean value which is just it's not like integer it just means yes or no it's moving or it's not so i'm back here in the main timeline i'm not inside the ship right <laughs> you know it better be right i'm going to click up here on the code layer i'm in the main frame scene one open back up my actions panel here and I'm going to um, name my variable. And what's my variable called? Dragging. With a colon. Okay. So now I'm going to put in Boolean. Capital B. Oh, there it is. I'm just going to click it. Now it's either true or false, right? So I'm going to put equals false with a semicolon. Okay, if it didn't work, uh, just click your timeline here again. Just click timeline, then come back and check your, your code and make sure it looks like that. It's always a good idea to comment your code so people know what's going on. It just explains what you're doing. So we're going to do add some code. And this is just for you to read to understand what's going on. It's not going to make the um, it's not going to make the computer do anything. That's what you do a double slash at the beginning of a comment for. So now I'm going to name my ship instance because I'm going to use it. I'm going to come back down, open up the ship layer, click on layer two. And there's my ship. I click on my ship, and then I click instance name and just call it ship. Make sure it's a capital ship. Okay, no space at the end. Now I'm going to lock the layer, and I'm going to come back up here to my code. Okay, you're not going to code the ship. Okay, you should see there dragging boolean equals false. So now I'm going to put my next um, code in here. I put ship on press. See that change colors? If you didn't spell it right, it won't. Equals function. And then put your opening curly brace and click enter. And you should get a closing curly brace. If you don't, add it. Now I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to press this. This refers to the ship. Okay, it refers back up here. Dot, start, drag. See right here? And I put my closing curly brace and I'm at my closing parentheses and my semicolon. So when they start dragging the ship we want to turn on dragging. So I'm going to put dragging equals true. So when they when they start dragging, that's what this start drag means. You start dragging the ship. We're going to have this variable dragging be true. Double check, make sure your code looks like this. 
So now instead of us writing the code for um, stopping the drag, we're going to copy it from the copy code. Hoo -hoo. So I click back here, going to go in my copy code, and I'm going to go from line 10 to line 13, copy it. Right click copy, come back out to the ship, enter after, six, after that closing bracket, couple spaces and control V. So there you go. Yeah, you've got <laughs> it just typed out the the stop the dragging. So now you you click your check the syntax. Should ding you back. If it doesn't and you have an error, see here it says function name expected. So we've got a error here. You know what? Can you see that I don't have this? That's what was that's what happened. So you check your code out, make sure that you've got everything that's supposed to be there. Let me go back here uh, to my timeline again and let me check uh, my syntax again. And this time it works okay. So now I'm going to run the game. Let's see if I can drag the ship. Yep, the ship goes where I go. If it didn't work, come here on the ship layer, click frame 2, click the ship and make sure that you named the instance ship with a capital S and no space. If that was okay, double check the code. Make sure that the code reads exactly like this. Before you go on to lab 4, make sure your sync doesn't ship doesn't sync, make sure that the ship is positioned at the starting point. Make sure that the ship moves when you click and drag it with the mouse. Then lock all your layers and save the game. You're ready for lab four. Welcome to lab four. Lab four, you're going to you're going to add um, a script to hit the goal. Okay, in the game, you're going to make a hit test to check to see if uh, one symbol touches another. And in this instance, you're going to make the ship sink if it touches the maze. Usually, a hit test uh, registers the bounding box. The bounding block box is the blue line around whatever symbol to check for a hit. So let's check our bounding boxes here. If I unlock the ship layer, click the ship, you can see the blue bounding box around the ship. Let me lock it. Let me hit the goal layer. I come up and see the hit the uh, bounding box around the goal layer. Now I'm going to name this instance goal, capital G, and just click enter. So now we got it. Define the event that's going to make the hit test run. In this particular case, um, when the mouse is moving, it's run, going to run hit tests. So now I'm going to open up my action panel. Well, I better go on the <laughs> I better go on the code layer, right? So now I'm going to go on my project copy code. I'm going to go lab four, and I'm going to add my event handler. Go from line 17 to 19, right click copy. Come back out. Now I'm going to hit test. So I'm going to click enter. I'm just telling it what I'm doing. So I just um, right click paste and put in the code. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my variable a value. A value is just information that's stored in a variable. So you have a variable x here and you're storing value 1. A boolean value can uh, store true or false. You don't go too far in programming before you run into an if statement. If statements um, are really powerful. 
So uh, this example shows a statement that will run when the variable x uh, contains the value of 1. The double equal sign just tells Flash to check both sides um, of, the of the items to see if they're equal. If x is equal to 1, um, the functions inside this are going to run. If not, nothing else is going to happen. So now I'm going to go copy my next batch of code. If dragging is true. So I'll go down from 23 to 25, right click copy. So now, let me make this a little bigger so you can see what I'm doing. Between my curly brackets here on line 14, I'm going to add my new code. So you got the, I've got the curly ending curly bracket below. So after I paste it in here, I should have lines 16 and 17 to be curly brackets. So now I'm going to grab another if statement to put below here. Right click copy. Right under this if, I right click paste. So now at the bottom I should have three closing curly brackets. So now I click my blue check mark. And my code is fine. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock all my layers. I'm going to add some frames here. So I'm going to click here. Then unlock all my layers. I come over to frame 4. Click there. Right click. Insert frame. So this puts the same background on the next four layers. So now I'm going to add regular keyframes, not blank keyframes, on the text and the button layer. I'm going to right click, insert keyframe. Make sure it's a keyframe, not a blank keyframe. Same thing here. Right click, insert keyframe. Now I'm going to add keyframes on the rest of the layers. Now, because I want to clear the game off of uh, my third layer here from the maze on up, I'm going to insert blank keyframes on layer 3. So right click, insert blank keyframe. So now I put blank keyframes on the button, the maze, the ship, the goal, and the code layer. It takes all the game elements out. It should clear this out. So now I'm going to name my um, frames here. I'm going to call this one Title 2. And I'm going to name this frame Level 2. And I put go to and stop title two. Check my code. It digs me back. I don't have any errors there. Let me try and run my code. Click on start. I drag up to the goal and it takes me to the next page. That's what I want to happen. Now if that doesn't work, what you do is you check your names. Make sure that this is called goal over here. Make sure that this is called ship over here. Make sure that this is called title one or Title II rather. 
and this is called level two okay and you want to make sure you're sending it to the right place right <laughs> if your code says has to say you're going to title two Okay, before you move on to um, lab five, you want to check your work. Make sure your game moves to the second frame when the player hits the goal. Lock all your layers, save the file. 